Buying land for a mobile home. All right, guys, we're going to talk all about buying land for a mobile home and the six things you need to be aware of when you're buying home, buying land to put a mobile home on it. So we're going to jump right into that. But first off, I have to thank you for that person that asked this question. If you've got a question you'd like to have me answer, type it in the comments below and I'll create a video just like this for you. But without further ado, let's jump into these six things that you need to know before buying a land to put a mobile home on it. And the first thing I want to check out is, is it in a flood zone? Now, what happens is the national government has decided what areas are flood zones and what areas aren't and the risk factors. And so if it is possible for you to buy flood insurance, then you know it's located in a flood zone. You can also do uh, look at some maps and you can do a flood certificate to tell you what type of flood zone it's located in. But that is something that you want to check out. First thing I do is call an insurance agent, ask them if flood insurance is available for that area. If so, how much it is. That's a big one because you don't want to have a devastating flood come through, especially if it's in a high risk area, um, and you may not even be able to put it on there. So that's one thing you're gonna wanna do. The second one is zoning. You've gotta just call the zoning department and ask them the municipality where the property is located and ask them simply, can I put a mobile home there? Because they may have restrictions where mobile homes are not allowed, and that's gonna kill your ability to buy this piece of land for your mobile home right away. Actually, I would probably do this one number one. Um, because if the zoning's not there, nothing else matters. So that would probably be the first thing that I would do is talk with the city to make sure that's the case. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is electricity. To put a mobile home there, you're gonna have to have electricity that is there. And if you don't have electricity, you will have to go and tie into another line. So let's just say, um, let's just use, let's, let's just kind of do uh, an area here. Let's say all of these are lots, okay? Um, and let's just bring them all the way over here. So let's say you're buying this lot is right here and you're wanting to um, put a mobile home on this property. Well, the problem is if there is not electricity on this property, you would have to spend the money to dig, get permission, whatever the case is through utility easement lines all the way. And let's say that over here is where the electricity is running. You have to pay to get the electricity to your lot if you want it there. And you're gonna have to put it through um, where there's electrical easements on other properties. So you're gonna have a big dig to make this happen. If there is not electricity here, you've gotta figure out where the nearest electricity is and you're going to have to get a price on what it's gonna cost. And I'll tell you right now, it's expensive. So electricity is the next thing I'm gonna be looking at. Does it have electricity? If not, what's gonna cost me to get it there? That's the next thing you wanna be looking at, okay? So we've talked about flood, we've talked about zoning, we've talked about electrical, but before I talk about water wells, I need your help, guys. Please, if you're enjoying this video, hit the thumbs up button. It tells me I'm doing a great job, and even more important, it tells YouTube I'm doing a great job, and I want YouTube to be happy. Okay, so, Let's talk about water and wells. So what's basically happening is on your lot, is there water, is there culinary water on your property? If there is not, is there a well on your property? If there is a well, you need to have a well inspection. You need to have the water inspected. You need to make sure the water is safe to drink or that you can do that stuff and how long that well is gonna last for. That's something you need to have happen. If not, you're gonna have to do a well dig, which means they're gonna have to bring in big heavy equipment, dig a long ways. You're going to have to have an environmental engineer check things out to see where you can dig for that. That is expensive and you want to make sure you've got that taken care of. Water is a big deal. Not all lots are going to have an easy time finding water. So that's the next thing that you want to check on. Now, what you'll find is you'll find some pieces of land that are super cheap and seem like great deals and they don't have any of these things. It's in a flood zone. Zoning won't allow it. There is no electrical. There's no well and you can't find one. You know, they're not going to have these elements which is why people are practically giving land away for really inexpensive pricing. So water and well is the next thing we're going to talk about. Now we're talking about sewer. Where does the poop go is the question. And same thing, if there's not, um, if it's not on, on a septic or if it's not on a sewer line, you're going to have to run a septic. Now a septic's not all that scary, but what you're going to be required to do is a perk test. A perk basically says, where is the water rising? Because we've got to be 
concerned about that because we don't want to be running leach fields. And so what a perk test will do, if this is your lot, we'll call this lot one, they're going to dig around in some different areas and they're going to try and find where the water is seeping in those things. Then what they're going to say is this is where you've got to put your house because we're going to come and we're going to put a septic system and then we're going to run this leach field all the way down here so that we can drain out the leach fields. And so they may give you a couple of options and in some cases they'll say this is the only option, this is the only place you can put your home in order for us to put the septic system and that may not be exactly where you're hoping the home would go. That's going to happen because you're doing a perk test. You're going to want to make sure you know where the poo goes because if you don't, there's going to be a problem. Trust me. Okay, next, let's talk about gas and propane. You're going to want to make sure there's a line bringing natural gas to the property. If there is not natural gas coming to the property, you're going to need to purchase a propane tank. And they have these big propane tanks. Now, keep in mind, basically, rather than having a natural gas line come to you, you're going to have somebody coming every couple of weeks that's going to be filling your propane tank and your propane tank will then be uh, doing getting you the heat and the things you need in your house now just be aware of this propane's not a bad thing i own a house that has propane it's on propane not a big deal other than somebody's got to come and fill it up i have them on a regular schedule the price of propane goes up and down so you've got to be aware of that um, and you have to make sure the appliances and things in the property are are made to be burning on propane so that they do that because it's not going to react the same as if it's in natural gas. Okay, guys, these are the six things that you need to be aware of when you are buying land for a mobile home. If you forget these things, you can end up in a world of hurt. So I hope this is really helpful for you. Now, if you want to find some of these land deals, you could use one of our postcard templates to help find some of these land deals that may make sense for you. If you'd like to get a copy of a postcard template, you can text me your email address to 435 435- 2940433. Also, I have a video on how do I find the value of land. I'm going to put that on the screen so you can check that out. I also have a blog post, the four questions to ask yourself when investing in mobile homes. So I'm going to put that in the description below so you can read up. Otherwise, if you're not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I would certainly love to have you and make it a very profitable day. Bye for now.